as we turn right now on the corner of uh, Central Park West to Sting. That's right, the musician Sting. Hi, Sting. It's Hello, great to darling. see you. How are you? Nice to be here. Uh, so what are you doing here? Well, I'm with the indigenous group here, you know, and they've always been at the forefront of this struggle, and I think it's right that they are at the front of it. Uh, their message has always been the same, the planet's in danger, and you better wise up. And, you know, there's a very, very well-financed, well-organized campaign to sow uh, complacency about climate change. Uh, at the behest of oil companies and it's propaganda. These people aren't complacent. I'm not complacent. We have we have to do something. Today is the day. And why march with indigenous people? Talk about your involvement. People certainly know you as a musician, but you're also a major global environmental activist. Well, you know that the indigenous people's message has been consistent from the beginning of this thing. They're saying that we're, we're in danger. And what endangers them and their homelands endangers us here in New York City. It's the same it's the same planet. It's a consistent and very simple message, and that's why I'm with them today. You spend time with world leaders who are in awe of you. What do you tell them? I don't think they're... Or who have rocked out to you? <laughs> what do you tell them? Only what I'm telling you now. L listen to the people who know, which is the indigenous community. Yeah. Do you think President Obama is doing enough? Um, no, I don't think anybody's doing enough, frankly. I think, you know, we need to really uh, pool our resources to make sustainable energy a, a reality. You know, the world is, is full of energy. We have solar, solar power, wind. We can do more than just dig oil out of the ground and destroy the climate. Britain? Your home country, Britain? No, none of us are doing enough. None of us are doing enough. But we need, we need government to step up to the plate. Uh, there's a UN climate summit on Tuesday. Your thoughts about that? There's concern about the level of corporate involvement. Yeah, well, a lot of corporations will pretend they're uh, trying to save the planet, and, do, and they're doing the opposite. Uh, so I, I, I have no patience with that kind of whitewash, but uh, we've got to be careful. There is an interesting irony here. Um, as the gathering is here at Columbus Circle, um, and it's the indigenous people of the world who are leading this march and will be passing the Christopher Columbus statue. We're joined right now by Sonia Guinansaka uh, of Culture Strike. Did I pronounce your name correct? Yes, Sonia Guinansaka. So, Sonia Guinansaka, you're wearing a t-shirt that says, undocumented, unafraid, unapologetic. That is really the motto of the dreamer and immigrants' rights movement. How does that relate to climate change? Yeah, so I'm actually here with Culture Strike, and we're a national network of artists, musicians that focus on migrant justice. And so one of the things that we wanted to showcase is, is that climate change affects, you know, frontline folks like migrant communities, you know, where there's a forced migration happening. And so we want to acknowledge that. But also also say, you know, we're here, we're unafraid, we're here also to fight for Mother Earth. We're standing in front of a large group of people who are holding signs in the shape of life preservers. And we're going to see if right now we can get someone to come over. Excuse me, can you come over? Can someone come over and talk about why you're here? Can someone come over and talk about why you're here? Okay, here we have a woman. It says Red Fern Houses. Um, where are the Red Fern Houses? But first, start off by saying your name. Hello, my name is Kimberly Combs. I live in Red Fern Houses in Far Rockaway, Queens. It's a NYCHA development, and we didn't get that much of an impact as down the beach in Far Rockaway, but we're here for everyone that suffered in Sandy. What does climate change mean to you? The climate change means to me my grandchildren may have to may not have the same things I was able to, and, and took advantage of. And they might have to come outside and mask and things like that come 25, 30, 50 years. So I'm out here so my grandchildren and everybody else's grandchildren can live a good life and breathe good air and have lakes and all that good stuff. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Steffi Woolhandler, what's a doctor like you doing in the streets of New York? Well, there's uh, several hundred doctors in the physicians contingent, medical students as well. And we're here because this is a, a global warming is a health crisis. Um, 
we're seeing, uh, we saw tens of thousands of deaths from cholera related to algae blooms. Um, we've seen the mosquitoes that carry malaria and dengue fever coming, moving north and moving to higher elevations. We saw a thousand people die in New Orleans because of a hurricane. Um, there's no way the healthcare system can deal with this problem alone. We need to be working to stop global warming now.